Hello and welcome back to my channel um, and welcome to a charity shop book haul. Um, apologies if in this video you can hear some noises. Um, one of my neighbours is doing something to their driveway and I have no idea what it is. All I know is it's loud. So I apologise if you can hear that. Um, so yeah, yesterday I was in town um, and I was waiting around to meet up with someone. So I thought I would go to a charity shop and see what I could find. Um, I haven't done a charity shop haul for a while because obviously I was not here for a couple of years. Um, so yes, yeah, first time I'm showing you things that I bought from a charity shop for a while. So the first thing I picked up was this. Um, it's The Initiation um, by Diane Ho. It's a point horror book, and it's one of the ones that Diane Ho wrote. I think she wrote 19 of them, and they're all set in this school called Nightmare Hall. Well, the school is called Salem University. Um, it's set in Salem University, and the place is called Nightingale Hall, but all the students call it Nightmare Hall, because all these weird things keep happening. Um, and yeah, I am currently reading this and loving it. Um, so I really w want to pick up some more point horror books, and especially this format, like, I'm not sure, I don't know, but I think this is mass market, um, but yeah, I am loving this so far, and I'm excited to pick up more point horror books in the future. The next one I have, I feel like I've heard a lot of people talk about this author, maybe not this book, but this author especially. This is a Middlesex by Geoffrey Eugenides. This is huge. Um, the ones, well, the one people know most about is um, The Virgin Suicides, which was actually made into a film, I think, at some point. But anyway, this says, Dangling a silver spoon over her daughter-in-law's belly, Desdemona confidently predicts that her next grandchild will be a boy. But a rogue pair of chromosomes descended from the slopes of Mount Olympus will survive war, bootleggers and heartbreak to finally unite in Calliope Stephanides, a baby girl who upsets all the odds. Growing up in Michigan, Calliope is the bearer of a family secret that turns her into Cal, the narrator of this intersex, intergenerational epic. Interesting and slightly odd. It sounds quite strange. And also, in here, like, obviously I bought this from a charity shop, and somebody had used a check as a bookmark. I hope they cashed this check. It doesn't have a name or anything on it. Um, was this a receipt? No, it is actually a, a check. I hope they cashed it, but, um, yeah, it was in the book. It's from 2016, so a bit late now if they didn't cash it. Yeah, so that's that one. <clears throat> now the next book I have is a really interesting one. It's called Who Was Betty? Um, and it's by various authors, including... I'll name you some ones that I've actually heard of. Joanne Harris, Philippa Gregory. Um, who else have I heard of? Tony Husband, Barbara Taylor Bradford, Alan Titchmarsh, Judy Cooper, Mark Reed. Um, and it says, it's a question that's asked time and time again, yet no one knows for sure the inspiration behind the name of Yorkshire's iconic cafe tea rooms. Just who was Betty? Rumours and half-baked theories abound, but it remains a mystery, one that even the surviving members of the founding family have been unable to solve. So now, Yorkshire's finest and most famous imaginations have been called upon to take a whimsical journey through the possibilities of who the elusive Betty might be. So that sounds pretty cool. And yeah, so like, it's basically like a short story collection. It's very, very slim. Um, and yeah, the stories don't actually have titles. It's just which author wrote it. Um, which I think is quite interesting, but it also has really nice illustrations in it. Um... Sorry, I'm trying to find... Yeah, so, instead of, like, the name of the story, it says the name of the author, and each chapter starts with 
a, a well, each story starts with an illustration at the top. So yeah, I thought that was a pretty interesting idea. Now the next book I bought is uh, Camille, and this is by Pierre Lemaitre. I might be saying that wrong. Obviously it's French. Um, and I didn't realise when I bought this that it's actually the third book, I think, in a young adult mystery thriller trilogy. But, I mean, I could probably find the other two pretty cheap, so... But yeah, I thought it sounded interesting when I read the synopsis. And I love these covers. These are like new covers that were um, reissued a few years after the series became famous. And the first one is called Alex and then Irene. Uh, and then Camille. The next one I have is quite an interesting one, again. It's called The Disappearance Boy by Neil Bartlett. And it says, this kind of reminds me a little bit of The Night Circus, but set, like, much, much earlier. So it says, Reggie, Reggie Rainbow is an angry young man, one who treads the backstage corridors of Down at Heel variety theatres for a living. Childhood polio has left him with a limp, but his strong arms and nimble fingers are perfect behind the scenes, helping illusionist Mr. Brooks to disappear a series of glamorous assistants night after night. Then, when Mr. Brooks accepts an unexpected booking down at the Brighton Grand and picks up a beautiful new assistant on the way, Reggie finds herself in a strange new town. The seaside air starts to work its own disconcerting kind of magic, and Mr. Brooks' disappearance boy starts to wonder just how much longer he can go on keeping secrets for a living. I thought it sounded interesting. I love the cover. I think it's amazing. Unfortunately... The shop I bought these from had these stickers that, like, are not easy to get off. So I've tried, but it's left these little, it's left these little bits, like on um, Camille as well. But it is what it is. Okay, then I picked up Why Forgive um, by Johann Christoph Arnold. And... Sorry. And, uh, yeah. I'm going to see if I can find a proper synopsis, because there isn't really one there. Uh, okay, I can't really find one. But it basically takes a look at why certain figures in culture and stuff did the things that maybe were controversial, if that makes sense, and whether they should be forgiven or not. Something like that. Um, let me see if I can give you more insight. Okay, no I can't. But I just thought it sounded quite interesting. Uh, it's an interesting, a interesting um, idea. And yeah, so I picked that one up. It, 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 for example, it says... Nelson Mandela, a much needed message not only for South Africa but for the whole world. Uh, it says Hashim was shot on a street corner and paralysed for life. And then at the bottom it says tragedy, st tragedy struck them all full force but they refused to remain its victims. So, I'm not really sure what that one's about but I thought it was an interesting concept and it sounds pretty good. The next one I got is, well, it has an awesome cover for one. It's called Journey Into Space, and it's by Toby Litt. Um, and I love sci-fi, so this sounded right on my street. Um, humankind has taken a, f a fateful journey into space. A vast generation ship hurtles away from a violent, troubled Earth to settle a distant planet orbiting an alien star. Those who set out on this journey are long since dead. Those who will arrive at their destination have yet to be born. For those who must live and die in the cold emptiness between the stars, there is only the claustrophobic permanence of non-being. Life lived in unending stasis. Then the unthinkable happens. Two souls, August and Celeste, rebel. And from the fruit of their rebellion comes a new and powerful force which will take charge of the ship's destiny. 
Journey into Space is classic science fiction at its most by, uh, beguiling, timeless, vast in scope, and daring in execution. So I'm looking forward to getting to this one. Um, and then the last one I have here is also a bit unusual, but it's quite cool. Um, so this is The Heroine Diaries, and it's by Nikki Six, who, um, if you don't know, was the bassist, I believe, um, of the rock band Motley Crue. And I love rock music, um, and especially old rock music like uh, Motley Crue and Blue Oyster Cult and things like that. And yeah, and it says on the back, well, the subheading is A Year in the Life of a Shattered Rock Star. It says, in one of the most unique memoirs of addiction ever published, Motley Crue's Nikki Six shares raw and mesmerising journal entries from the year he plunged to rock bottom and his courageous decision to pick himself up and start living again. Alcohol, acid, cocaine. They were just affairs. When I met heroin, it was true love. That's a quote from Nikki Six. But this book is really awesome. It has these really cool pages. It's quite dark, like, setting and stuff. It has these really cool pages um, with, like, blood and some black pages and just pages with really cool illustrations. It's a really interesting concept and a really cool idea and it's, it looks really well executed. Um, yeah, and I just thought this one sounded fascinating and I love the way it looks. Kind of the whole design and everything, I love it. Thanks Nikki, thank, thank you. Yeah, that's, uh, that's lovely, beautiful. Um, let's see if you There was a picture I saw in here yesterday which was amazing. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to find it. Let me see. I should have bookmarked the page or something. Oh, this one. It's like a needle at the top, and then the poison dripping into somebody's mouth. But yeah, I thought this sounded interesting, and it's a really cool concept, and it looks really unique and interesting. So there you have it. That was my uh, small charity shop book haul. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you wish, you may subscribe. And I will see you all again very soon. Goodbye.